Welcome to the GAMS Core Troll video training series. Today, we will be introducing you to the Core Troll Freeware Playback Menu. From the desktop, double click on the GAMS Core Troll Server icon. Confirm the Core Troll Server icon is visible in the bottom right of the taskbar. Once the application is running, double click on the GAMS Core Troll Client icon to start the client. Once the client is running, you will need to log in. Enter your user ID, if different from admin, the default ID. Enter your password, which you should have created upon installation and setup of Quartrol. Select Connect to log into the client. The client initially is in a quarter screen format. To put the client into full screen, click on the square icon in the top right corner. Right now the client is in live. Click on Playback toward the top left corner to enter the playback menu. Before we begin, let's note the components of the playback menu. The first component is the playback view panel where playing video will be observed. The configuration of the video channels in the view panel are selectable in the layouts panel. The selectable video sources, the server and its cameras, can be found in the channels panel. The timeline panel displays and offers the selection of available recorded data from the currently selected video channel. Below the Timeline panel is the Navigation panel, where selection, navigation, and export of the recorded data is performed. Now that we know where the components of the playback menu are, let's get familiar with how to play back recorded data. Starting with the playback panel, as we select a video channel, the associated data becomes available on the timeline. We see this video channel, Timeline Association, as we select each of the additional video channels. As noted before, various layout options are available in the layout panel, so feel free to select the layout you require. Click on the arrow to the left of the layout templates to reveal a wide assortment of options. Once you have selected a layout that meets your needs, in this case I have selected a 2x2 layout, you will need to select your cameras. From the channels panel, you can drag and drop or double click on the desired video channel source. In this case, I'm double-clicking on the cameras I want, and they are populating the video channels sequentially. The timeline is broken into three sections. The first displays blocks of time. The second displays the recorded data for the currently selected camera, and the third displays the number of loaded video channels. Besides dragging the yellow bar left or right on the timeline, there are several other navigation options. Found on the left and right of the navigation bar are the start and stop timestamps. The start and stop timestamps indicate at what time the currently viewable timeline starts and stops. To zoom in or out on the timeline, select one of the sets of double arrows found next to the timestamps. Drag the double arrows either to the left to zoom out or to the right to zoom in. The next grouping of functions are the playback controls. The playback controls offer the following, pause, play, as well as backward forward by one frame, by five seconds, by one minute, by one hour, or by 24 hours. There's also the option to go to the beginning or end of the currently selected recorded video. The next function is playback speed, which can be adjusted from 0.5 times up to 32 times speed, either forward or backward. In order to select a specific time for starting playback, Select on the clock icon to launch the Go To function. To change or modify the date, highlight the date and manually change it. Or click on the calendar icon and select the month and day. Click on the calendar icon again in order to exit the calendar function. To return to the current date, click on the date icon and the date will go to the current date. Use the left or right arrow to change the day backward or forward. To change the time, double click on the time entry. Highlight the number and change it by tapping the number key. When finished, select OK. To capture an image from a specific video source, select the video channel, then click on the camera icon. In a moment or two, the camera icon will stop rotating and the image will be saved. To export a video clip, first select the video channel from which to export the video clip from. Next, click on the export function found to the right of the camera icon. Once the video export function appears, 
you can use the video stream drop down to select a different camera if needed. The key to the export function is knowing the start from date and stop at date of the desired video clip. To enter the date and time for the start from date and the stop at date, follow the same format as used with the go to function. To change or modify the date, highlight the date and manually change it, or click on the calendar icon and select the month and day. To return to the current date, click on the Today icon and the date will go to the current date. Use the left or right arrow to change the day backward or forward. To change the time, double click on the time entry, highlight the number and change it by tapping the number key. Repeat this process for the stop at date and then click on export to export the video clip. Now that we have exported our clip, how can we play it back for review? Click on Library at the top of the window to access the Control Library. Looking at the library, we can see our export clips and images. Select the video clip and then click on Open. In a moment, the video clip will begin playing in Windows Media Player. Very quickly, I'll cover the Media Player controls. Cast to Device allows sending the video to other Windows-based devices. Aspect Ratio which essentially can stretch or shrink a screen's aspect ratio as needed, play pause for playing or pausing a currently selected video, volume to adjust up or down the volume level for a video's associated audio, full screen for maximizing or reducing the size of the Windows Media Player window, and toggle to set up Media Player to replay the clip once it's stopped. Click on the X in the top right corner to close Media Player and return to Control. Another way to access saved clips is to click on the option Show in Windows Explorer. Windows Explorer will open to the folder containing all the video clips and pictures saved by Control. Once a video clip or image is no longer required, select it and then click on the icon of the trash can in the top right. Note the file will also be deleted in Windows. So if you are sure you wish to delete the file, click on Yes. The clip that was selected will now be removed from the Quartro Library and Windows. Now that we are familiar with the playback menu, let's take a look at one more way to playback video. Click on the Live option to return to the Live View. Select a video channel, in this case I have selected the third one, and click on the Play icon in the bottom right of the video channel. You'll notice the timeline, start time, and end time Go to, Camera, and Export Functions appear in that channel. At this point, you could perform most of the playback functions you might require without having to leave the live screen. Well, that completes our training video for the Quartrol Freeware Playback Menu. Thank you for viewing this video and keep an eye on our website for more to come.